Да. Okay. I'm live on Periscope. What's up, Periscope? So hopefully now I'm live on Facebook. So hopefully you can hear me. Uh, before, I don't think I was coming through the mic. So now I hope you can hear me. So anybody that's watching live, let me know if you can hear me. Because if you can't hear me, i got to flip some more switches and make sure that the sound is coming through. Okay? Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. So, there we go. You can hear me. Because if you can't hear me, i got to flip. Okay, good. Yeah, so now I know I'm being heard. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to <clears throat> Prophet David Taylor here, PDT here, the live, weekly live, prophetic word. <clears throat> Sorry about those first two videos. Those first two videos were experimental. I was trying to see if I could use. This is Facebook's live setting, their live stream setting. Before, I normally just do things on my own devices. So I wanted to see if I could do it with Facebook's uh, settings. So this is uh, Facebook's live stream. So let me know what the sound quality is. Let me know what the picture quality is because I'm not quite sure. Uh, it looks kind of funny from my end, but uh, so you just let me know what it looks like out there. Okay, and definitely let me know if I'm being heard, I'm gonna type that in the comments. Definitely let me know if you can hear me. Okay, definitely let, definitely let me know if you can hear me. All right, so today's my prophetic word is blow the trumpet. Lord have mercy, when the Holy Ghost gave me this, this was really something else. So we're gonna say a word of prayer and we're gonna dive right in. By the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for your matchless mercy, thanking you for your matchless grace, thanking you that you forgive sin, transgression, and iniquity. Thank you that you are a high God and a holy God and a loving God and beyond anything we can ever understand. So we thank you for your grace. We thank you for Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness, and we thank you for his shed blood. So Lord, breathe through me. I surrender. Fill me with the Holy Ghost of God. Fill my mind, my heart, my mouth, my lips, my hand gestures, my teeth, every part of me of God, so that you can come through, so that what you want said will be said in this broadcast, that you might be glorified in all things, and that the word you want released to the saints might come forth. We thank you for it, we believe you for it, and we're excited about it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. Okay, great, my son says you can hear me great. All right, so uh, today's life prophetic word is blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet. Now, what is that referring to? We're going to have to read some scripture to understand what that is. Okay? So, we're going to go to the book of Joel. Joel is in the Old Testament. And remember, I told you that minor prophets does not mean that their messages are less important. That is not what minor prophets means. Minor prophets just means that their books were smaller. And that's all that means. Okay? Because if you've never read Malachi, Malachi is something else. Malachi ain't but five chapters, but it's life-changing. Joel is also life-changing. So is uh, Obadiah, so is Hosea, so is Jonah. Those are all minor prophets, three, four, five chapters. But their messages are powerful. So again, a minor prophet just means the book is smaller, not their message is not important. So we're going to go to the book of Joel in the Old Testament. And we're going to uh, read in chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 through 14. I know that's a lot of verses, but they're necessary. Necessary to read all that. So we're going to read uh, Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. Okay? Here we go. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants, inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, 
like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall. They shall climb, upon the, climb up upon the horses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heaven shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? And then we'll read verse 15 as well. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Lord, and Miss Claudia, in the morning, there's, there's a lot of verses, and I'm not going to have time to exegete all that. But I want you to understand what the Spirit of God is saying in a, to us now through the Rhema word or the live word or the prophetic word. Because it sounds just like God. I'm so excited about it. I don't know what to do when he gave me this. Okay. He says, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. So whenever the trumpets are blown in the New Testament, it signifies an event, but it also signifies God trying to get the attention of his people. He says, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. That means to quiver, to fear, to shake, to tremble, to be perturbed, perturbed to be excited. So we're supposed to be trembling both with <clears throat> fear <coughs> and reverence of the Lord, but also excitement about what God is supposed to do. For the day of the, court, the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Some translations say, for it is here. It is here right now. And it is here right now through the beer bug. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. Okay, now let me say right here that many people have been arguing about if what's going on is the devil, we can just rebuke it. If what's going on is judgment, if what's going on is what God, is God allowing this thing to go on or is God sending it or whatever. And I'm saying that it doesn't matter because it's here. I've seen people argue and go back and forth, round and round and round about, you know, the source or the cause or whatever, you know, you know, perfect will of God versus permissive will of God. Is it God ordained or is it God allowed? But the bottom line is, it's here. Okay? Uh, it says a day of darkness and gloominess. And the point I want to bring out there is that God is still at work in the midst of darkness and gloominess. Many times as Christians, we have tried so hard to be happy, happy, joy, joy with everything and happy, happy, joy, joy about everything until we give off that impression that if we're not all walking around, because, you know, some people had that, that plastic smile, that forced smile, that, that paste smile. And we're going to see later on in the verse what God wants us to do. So we need to stop perpetuating that image, that plastic image of the happy, happy George, or that that's what it means to be a Christian, is that you're smiling all the time and you're happy all the time and everything's up and everything's positive and everything's sunshine and rainbows or else it's not God. That's not true according to the scripture. Okay? The scripture says it's a day of darkness and gloominess, okay? It's a day of darkness and gloominess. God is at work, even in the midst of the darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and a thick darkness, once again, okay? Now let's look at those words in the Greek. I don't have time to do this for every verse. I really wish I did. Darkness in the Greek, dark, darkness, misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. Okay? Uh, excuse me, in the Hebrew. I said Greek, in the Hebrew. The Hebrew word there is choshek. Choshek. And it means uh, what I just read. 
dark, uh, the dark darkness, misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. You can't tell me that's not what's happening right now with this worldwide thing that's going on. It said darkness and gloom. Okay? The word there coming out of the Hebrew, I'm reading out of Strong's Concordance 6, uh, 653. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew, it means duskiness, misfortune, or concealment. Gloom. That's what's happening right now. A day of clouds. Okay, that word's coming out of the Hebrew. 6051, a cloud, the nimbus, a thunder cloud, and blackness. That word is cloud or heavy cloud. So in other words, the emphasis there, okay, is that there's clouds, thickness, darkness, concealment, ignorance, sorrow, that kind of thing. God is moving even, even in the midst of everything that's happening. As the morning spread upon the mountains, then he says, a great people and a strong, there have not ever, not, there have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. What does that mean? That means that even in the midst of what's going on now, what God is doing and what God is hoping to do, what God wants to do, what God wants us to hear him say so we can obey, is that he is going to bring forth a great people even in the midst of what's going on now. And it's going to be a great people and a strong, and it's going to be a generation that there's never been before, and there's not going to be any more like after it, even to the years of many generations. So in other words, we have a prime opportunity during this time. We have a prime opportunity to be a generation that has ever been seen before. Somebody hit me with a Facebook message. Okay. Okay? We have a prime opportunity to become a generation that <clears throat> has never been seen before. That's the... Remember I told you how when God opens his hand, when God extends his hand, then the wise Christian does not slap it away. You're not supposed to slap it away. You're supposed to receive what God is offering. And what God is offering right now is a chance to become a generation that we haven't seen before. A fire, verse 3, Joel 2, 3. A fire defiles before them and behind them a flame burns. So God says that flame is both our forward and our rear guard. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. Well, what does that mean? I've said many, many times that this experience that we're having now is a Noah-level event. When Noah came out of the ark, what did God say to him? God said the same thing to Noah that he said to Adam to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So God put Noah and his family in the same position Adam was in. He gave him the same commandment. So when the Bible says the land is as a garden of Eden before them, we're going to have a chance to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth, to dominate, to subdue, just like God told Adam. So the land is as a garden of Eden, lush and plush and thick. That means there'll be a lot of opportunities for growth that we can take advantage of if we become this generation that God is calling. Uh, four and behind them a desolate wilderness Joel 2 3 uh, do I have to explain that that everything because everything has been shut down things are in the wilderness right now entire industries are collapsing if they survive this they're never going to be the same some industries are not going to make it through this uh, there's going to be a wilderness a dryness a flat land a land of no provision okay that's what the wilderness represents that's what's going to be behind us as God brings us out of this. That's why I'm so excited about this message. Because this is just like God, to bring a message of hope, even in the midst of sore judgment. And behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. He's talking about being strong, being aggressive, charging forth. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. If you haven't learned anything by now through this experience, it should have been to how to put your armor on. Because the only way to make it through this time is to have the full armor of God on. You gotta be using your shield of faith every day. You gotta be using your sword of the spirit every day. You gotta be armoring up every day. That's what you should be doing. So God says when we come out of this, we're going to be set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained all faces shall gather blackness. You can't tell me that's not already going on all over the world. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall they. Now shall neither shall one thrust another. Verse eight. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. 
So God said, we're not going to turn on each other. What have people been talking about? We've been talking about oneness and unity and pulling together and becoming one humanity again. Okay? And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Okay? Healing and being protected. All this is consistent with what God's been saying all along through here. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? So the God is going to speak. So if you are part of this generation, if you are part of this army, if you are part of what God is calling for during this time, God is going to speak before us before we go, before we charge forward. The word of the Lord is going to go before us to determine what we can take and what we can do and determine where to point us and to show us what we're supposed to be doing during this time. Uh, verse 12, Joel 2.12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. So God is saying during this time, what he wants us to do is turn to him with what? With all of our hearts. What does that mean? That means that God is calling for single-heartedness during this time. No more double-heartedness. No more being of two minds where we're going to you know, serve God on Sunday and serve ourselves or serve other gods or whatever, Monday through Saturday. And no more double-heartedness where we have you know, a little bit of God and a little bit of the world and a little bit of spirit and a little bit of flesh and a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of whatever else you're into. The Lord said he wants us to turn to him with his whole heart, but how? Okay? With fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Is that happy, happy, joy, joy? Is that smiling? Is that? No. It says with fasting, turn down your plate. With weeping and with mourning. Why? To weep over the sin. To weep over the things that we have done as saints and sinners, because both, you know, everybody's dying. To weep over the things we've done as humanity that have caused the judgment of God, that have caused the great and terrible day of the Lord because many times the Lord shows up with an and suddenly. And if we have pushed God through our own sins, and like the Bible says, ignorance and wickedness, to where God has had to globally judge us, we have to go before the Lord, fast and weep and mourn, cry for the sins that have brought his judgment upon us, cry for your sins, your family sins, and the sins of the people. <coughs> and with mourning, what does it mean to mourn before the Lord? To acknowledge, just like you mourn at a funeral, to acknowledge what we have allowed to die, to acknowledge what we have done wrong, to acknowledge our sorrow for us to realize that we have sinned against God, and that's why judgment has fallen. That's what we're supposed to be doing now, okay, according to this prophetic word. And then it says, and rend your heart. To rend means to tear. Tear your heart and not your garments. In the Old Testament, they had a custom that when they were going through repentance, when they were trying to get right with God, they would tear their garments, tear their outer coat, or tear their clothes, and then they would sprinkle dust on their heads. And that was part of their, their custom to demonstrate repentance or mourning or realizing they had done wrong before God. But God said, I want you to tear your heart, not your garments. I don't want you to go through ritual repentance. It's not the outside I'm concerned about, says the Lord is that I want you to tear your heart apart and let me cleanse the sin. Tear your heart apart with fasting and weeping and mourning and realizing the, the sin, the wrong that you have done to bring judgment. And turn to me with your whole heart and turn unto the Lord your God for, here's the, reason, here's the hope, for he is gracious and merciful, I'm in verse 13, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. So in other words, God is so good that even after he's released judgment, that compassion will flare up in his heart. The love of God, the compassion of God upon us, his people, will rise up in his heart as a loving father, as a loving savior, because God is good. Good beyond we have any right. He's not good based on us. He's good because he is good. So in other words, when God sees this type of repentance, 
It's appealing to his compassion. It's appealing to his heart. It's appealing to, to help him to help us move forward and move out of this wilderness and into back into a garden of Eden. Uh, and then it says, verse 14, who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him. There we go. That means the prosperity could come back if we do this. And even a meat offering and a drink, off, drink offering to the Lord our God, we can eat and drink again in plenty. And God will restore the land if we rent our heart and not our garments. And if we weep before the Lord and mourn the wrong that we have done, that will activate an appeal to God's compassion. See, now do you see how even through the scripture that God is extending his hand and God is saying, this is how to get me to help move you past that and to help you move you forward and become a great and mighty army that's on fire in front of you and behind you. What a blessing. And then finally, verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, and call a solemn assembly. This is what it's time to do, saints. This is the reign of word of the Lord right now. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Okay? And if we do this, God has already said, this is what stirs up my compassion when I see your repentance, when I see your humility, when I see you tearing your heart and not your garments. You see that? So I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that army. I want to be part of that new generation. With the fire of God before me, the fire of God behind me, I want to come out of this desolate wilderness, and I want the word of the Lord to go before me. And won't get hurt, won't break, break ranks, not trying to thrust, not trying to betray my fellow man, but we're going to run together, we're going to run like horses, we're going to scale the wall, we're going to be unstoppable. That's what God is offering, even in the midst of this terrible plague. And my response to that is, I'll take it. My response to that is yes. Okay? And I hope that's your response to it. Okay? All right. Now, if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Put them on the screen now. Now, when you see me, close my eyes and pray in tongues. I'm asking the Holy Ghost, are there any more prophetic words, financial, uh, physical healing, or deliverance that he wants me to release? Okay? So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Uh, uh, otherwise, here I go. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. So what the Holy Ghost just told me is, he used two words. There's going to be bleakness and there's going to be thickness. There's going to be bleakness and there's going to be thickness in the days to come. That's what's ahead. So what that means is that don't be surprised and don't be discouraged when you see either because in the days to come, there's going to be bleakness. That means some more bad things are going to happen. So don't be surprised by that. Because the Holy Ghost just told us it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But he also told us it's going to be thickness. Now, for some people, their bleakness is going to be thick, which is going to be a tragedy to watch. But for some people, that means that, that, that blessing and enlightenment and prosperity and fruitfulness is going to come back and begin to bloom. Okay, if you've ever seen a garden in bloom, how would you describe it? Part of how you describe it is that it's thick. When provision is coming from God, it's always thick. It ain't scarce. It ain't, you know, little trickles. It's, it's always abundant more than enough. Okay, Lisa says, pray that God continues to cover my home and my family. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the Hutcherson family and the Roberson family and the Edwards family, oh God, that every member of the family would be saved and know you personally and intimately and repent before you, God, of anything that's not pleasing in your sight, that they might become a part of the new generation and be filled with the Holy Ghost, that they might be able to hear from you for themselves and be led and guided and directed by you as their Lord, and that their bodies would be physically healed. We speak physical, physical healing to the family and help them to become a part of the new generation that's moving forward into this new thing that you're offering to us right now, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our righteousness, because we have no righteousness but him and his shed blood. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. So, <clears throat> amen, my son agrees in Jesus' name. So that's why some of us can look forward to thickness in the days to come. Okay? 
So that means we have to do it the way the Lord said do it. We got to be armored up. We got to not be betraying our, our brother. We got to stay in our own lane. We got to climb our own mountain. And then God's going to release his water, put that fire in front of us and the fire behind us and help us to move out of the wilderness and help us move into a space of thickness. That's what's coming. So I want to repeat, don't be discouraged if you see bleakness. Because as I said earlier in this broadcast, the scripture says that it's a day of darkness and gloominess and thick clouds, wickedness and ignorance. Remember, I read you the translation in the Hebrew. Don't be surprised and don't be dismayed by that. That's a part of what's going on. But even in the midst of that, there could be thickness from the Lord if we obey God, if we do what the Lord is telling us to do. So you hear me say it all the time. To be successful in the kingdom of God, you have to HBO. Now, to get into the kingdom of God, you ABC. To become saved, you ABC. A, admit. B, believe. C, confess. You admit you are a sinner. You believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died on the cross, and raised the third day for your sins and mine. And C, you confess that with your mouth as you're believing in your heart. That's how you get saved. That's how you get in God's kingdom and get right with God, ABC. That's accepting Him as Savior. But if you want to matriculate in God's kingdom, you want to grow, you want to go somewhere, you want to prosper, you have to HBO. Hear, believe, and obey. You've got to hear what the Lord is saying. You've got to believe that what God is saying is true and in your best interest. You have to believe that he loves you. And then you have to obey. You can't just hear it and you can't just believe it because if you believe it, you'll do it. You have to obey. So it's not enough just to be saved to get the full blessing and prosperity that believers want. To get that, you cannot just accept Jesus as Savior. You must also accept him as Lord. You must HBO. Hear what God is saying. Believe what he's saying and obey him. And what he said to us today through the scripture and the rhema word is that we're supposed to be mourning, weeping, and fasting, repenting of our sin, turning from everything that's been displeasing in his sight, and mourning and weeping for the sins of humanity that have brought judgment upon us. And when he sees us, excuse me, and when he sees us do that, that will stir the compassion in his heart because he's a good God. And like any father, even when you have to chastise your children, it still breaks your heart. Okay? If you're a parent, you know that even when you have to bring judgment upon your children because they've been acting up and you've got to put them back in check, you do that because you love them. But you, even when you do it, your heart is broken because you have so much love in your heart for your children. Well, we don't love more than Father God. We're not better parents than Him, and we experience that. So if we being evil can experience that, how much more Father God, the Father of lights, the Father of all good uh, and, and blessing, good, uh, all good and beautiful things, every blessing comes down from Him. So God is saying, when I see you doing that, it's going to stir up my fatherly compassion. It's going to stir up the goodness in me. And God said, I'm going to extend my hand and help you to be that great nation, and, and give you all those blessings, blessings when I see you acting that way. So we got to do it the way the Lord said do it, and then we can walk in it. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. That's a prophetic word for today. I'm excited about that word. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that word because anytime you have a chance to hear the Lord, that means you've got a chance. Uh, if God does you like he does King Saul, if the Lord just stopped talking to you, you're in trouble. But anytime you've got a chance to receive a word from the Lord and hear a word from the Lord, God is telling you how to succeed. God is telling you what he wants. God is telling you what he wants you to do. Okay? So let's get on that so we can become a part of that new generation and so we can move ourselves and our families forward. All right? Amen and amen. Um, now, uh, I want you to get on my mailing list. Uh, click on the button on my Facebook page to get on my mailing list. I'm doing New Music Friday. So every Friday I'm releasing new music. Now the first Friday of every month will always be a hymn because of my 150 hymn project. I have a hymn that I'm writing for every song. So that's coming out once a month, first Friday of every month, and then other Fridays will be different kind of things. Now, two days ago, this past Friday, I just released a gospel workout song. Now if you don't know what that is, long story short, a single mother told me several years ago that she wanted to work out at home, but she didn't want to use secular music because she didn't want to play that in front of her kids. And I said, now that's an interesting idea. So I started making gospel workout music to where it's got a good beat, nice good bumping beat, a nice good fall on the floor beat that you can, you know, get your sweat on, get on a treadmill, get on the Stairmaster, do your calisthenics, 
but it's not biblical lyrics. It's talking about the Lord, it's talking about scripture, it's talking about Jesus. So you can play it out and open in the family, you can play it around the kids, and you can create an atmosphere actually of worship in your house while you're exercising. Okay? So, uh, so, uh, so yes. Whoops. Whoops, pulled up something I didn't mean to pull up. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I got that going on. So get on my mailing list so that you can, uh, oh, okay. Okay, get on my mailing list so you can be a prize of that so that when I have drops in uh, you can get one of my um, my uh, weekly prophetic devotional is uh, still out quarter two is out and that's available uh, on my website you can click on that link and so anyway so I have a lot of content on coming out so on my Facebook page there's a little button that says sign up on the prophet David Taylor Ministries click on that link sign up get on my mailing list so I can send you reminders and let you know when new stuff is coming out and also uh, the link for my uh, music is on this page on New Music Friday. So you can click on the link and check out those videos as well. Okay? All right. Thank you so much. God bless. Thanks to all of you that watch me live. Thanks to those of you that are listening on the podcast. Thanks for those of you on Periscope, Facebook Live, and YouTube. I will see you next Friday. I got some more new music coming out. And then I'll see you again next Sunday for the next weekly live prophetic bird. Amen. God bless. And remember, it's time to blow the trumpet.